everyone, how's it going? So today I'm making a video to talk a little bit about how you can go about choosing what master's degree to study in the field of biomedical science. Now this is a question that I get asked quite frequently anyway, but the purpose of this video specifically is because I got asked by somebody called Kishan Patel from Instagram, how can you go about choosing a master's degree? Now Kishan told me in his message that he is a third year biotechnology student and that he's interested in pursuing a master's potentially in the field of oncology, which if anybody is not familiar with is cancer and cancer research. But if any of you guys are in the same position of choosing what masters you want to study and you're interested in maybe stem cell research or genetics or microbiology or something like that, I hope that this video can still be helpful to you guys as well. All right, so let's take it from the beginning. You are either in your final year of your undergraduate study or you have finished your undergraduate study and you're starting to think about masters. The first thing that I would encourage you guys to ask yourselves is do you already have a general area that you're interested in? So for example, are you generally interested in cancer research or do you have a little bit of an interest in neuroscience? It might be worth making a list of all of the things that you have a slight interest in and all of the things that you know that you don't want to do for sure. The next thing to start asking yourself is what kind of a masters do you want? Do you want the sort of masters where you are working in a lab setting? Or do you want to do the kind of masters where there is no lab work involved but you're still doing different kinds of research? And I know that a lot of the times when I talk about doing a masters on this channel, I speak about the kind of masters that involves doing lab work, simply because that was my experience. And I will put on a screen right now a number of areas where you can do the sort of research that involves lab work. But I also know that a lot of you guys might want to pursue a masters but are not necessarily interested in that sort of work. And that's absolutely okay because there are so many masters that you can do in things like public health, epidemiology, potentially some other fields relating to science communication. So for that reason, I will also put some course topics here as well that are not lab based, but are still within the field of biomedical science. Now, hopefully that little exercise has helped you to gather your thoughts a little bit, but let's assume that you have no idea what you want to do. You just know that you want to study a master's in the field of biomedical science, but that's it. You don't have a particular interest here or there. Now, if that's you, then this is what I would suggest. And what I'm going to do in a second, guys, is I've got my laptop here and I'm going to switch to showing you my screen so I can talk you through certain websites that I think you might find useful. Now, what I want to share with you guys, and just bear with me two seconds while I get the website up. Okay, so this is the website that I came across myself a couple of years ago when I was trying to decide what masters I wanted to study. And because it includes uh, masters from all over the world, you can literally choose your location, you can choose the type of masters, and just have a little browse around. So for the purpose of this video, I'm literally just going to type in cancer, and let's see what we get. Okay. So when I scroll down, wow, okay. So we've got 440 um, options there. So let's see if we can narrow it down a little bit. So for location, let's have a look. Um, I'm just going to choose United Kingdom. So that's 366 results. And let's have a look for course type. Um, let's say for course types, we're just going to have a look at MRES and MSC options. Oh, can I pick both or can I only pick one? Okay, so for some reason you can't pick multiple boxes, so I'm just going to press all and see what we get. All right, so just having a little look through what we have here, we've got uh, MSc in Precision Cancer Medicine, we have Cancer Cell Biology, we have got Radiation Biology, we have got Applied Exercise Physiology, so these are all, I guess, and there you go, you can see a couple of like Biomedical Sciences, Drug Design and Discovery, so biotechnology as well. So you can see that you can get a general idea of some of the courses that are like at least related to cancer. Now, what you could equally do is type in biomedical science and just have a look and see what kind of things come up in there. In fact, do you know what? Let's do that quickly now. Biomedical science search. My laptop is being a bit slow and I think it's because I've got the screen capture on. So giving me a bit of grief. Okay, wow. So 730 master's degrees all over the world, but I reckon, I think most of these will be UK based. Let's have a look. Yeah, so out of the 730, 571 of them are in the UK. So for the sake of uh, this video, let's just say UK. And let's have a read of 
couple of things that come up. So yeah, you can see a couple that are just a master's in biomedical science. You can see you've got uh, parasitology, again, drug discovery and design, science research, uh, biomedical engineering, sports science. You get the idea. So if you don't have any clue about specific fields, then going and having a look on here will at least get you to start thinking about certain fields. And I know that, again, it can be a little bit of information overload, but hopefully the more you do this, the more you find an area, then like search more into that area and then narrow it down a little bit more and then narrow it down a little bit more after that, then hopefully you can keep doing that until you kind of funnel in to at least a certain niche that you're interested in. So assuming that you've gone through that process and you have picked an area, so in Kishan's case, oncology and cancer research. Then the next question I suppose will be which institute and which university you should go to. Similar to the process that we just did on Find the Masters, if you aren't sure about the institute, I would say keep going on Find the Masters and kind of narrow your search again to do with locations. But for the sake of this video, I've chosen a handful, and I'm going to switch to my screen in a second, um, but I've chosen a handful of relatively well-known institutes in the UK that offer a master's course in the field of cancer research. That way I can talk you through a couple of them and tell you what I personally would look for when I'm comparing master's courses. So the ones that I have chosen are Manchester, Birmingham, Imperial College, UCL and Newcastle. And I guess for any of you guys who aren't familiar, I myself studied translational cancer medicine at King's College London and that was an MRes. So I'm not going to talk much about it in this video just because I've got plenty of other videos talking about that on my channel. So if you want to know a little bit more about the King's course, the King's College course, then watch some of my previous videos. But for now, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my tabs open up here and the first one that I'm going to be starting off with is Manchester. Now, ideally, the first thing that you will begin doing when having a look at the different courses is having a look at the course structure, or the course details in this case. So you've got course details there. This is for Birmingham. Again, course details. Um, Imperial, we also have... where's the details? Um, so we've got the overview there, and then this is UCL. Sorry, the pages are like all over the place because I was having a flick through them before I started filming. And Newcastle. Okay, so let's start with the Manchester one. So having a really quick read of the course description, basically at the Manchester course, you can see that it's the MS in cancer research and it's going to involve training within the field of cancer research and molecular biomedicine as well as doing some lab-based research placements. So already you know that this is going to be giving you a mix of both, mix of teaching and also lab placements. So if I just scroll down a little bit more, let's have a look. So it's giving you some of the examples of the transferable skills you can pick up. If I scroll down to teaching and learning, it tells you that they use a variety of methods including tutorials, workshops, seminars and the research placements. And importantly, guys, I think it's really worth having a look at how your course is going to be assessed. So again, one of the reasons why I picked my Masters at King's was because there were no exams. It was just two six months placements and you had to produce uh, reports as part of those projects. But having a look at this one in Manchester, I can see that you're going to have written reports, oral presentations, written assignments, posters, multiple choice exams, critical assessments of literature, as well as some online statistics exercises. So this course seems like it's kind of like holistic and it involves a little bit of everything. Sorry guys, my camera died for a second. All right, where was I? Oh yes, so I was talking about making sure to have a look at the way in which the course is going to be assessed just so you know what you are going to be applying for. Now for me personally, course structure and also assessment are probably the two most important things that I would look for. But once you have done all of this, the next important part is to have a look at some of the specific modules that the different master's course has to offer. And the reason why I say this is because depending on the institute you go to, one institute may be heavily involved in genetics research, whereas another institute may be more interested in immunotherapy. And that will kind of shift the kind of modules that you will have access to. Okay, so I'm on the UCL, MSc in Cancer, um, website, and here they've got the modules, they talk to you about some of the core modules that you will have to take, so uh, basic biology and cancer genetics and cancer therapeutics, um, and then if you scroll down, you can see you've got your core modules here, but then you also have the specialist modules, and I assume that you'll be able to pick from some of these. So you can see they've got behavioural science and cancer, they've got cancer clinical trials, they have got cancer immunology and immunotherapy, um, and then they've got cancer therapeutics and genetics up there. 
Oh no, sorry, these were the core cool ones. So yeah, these are the specialist ones. So that's that for UCL. Now let's have a look at Newcastle and see if they have a list. Okay, they have a modules tab, which is useful. Let's see. Yeah, so again, they've got a section for compulsory modules. So this is what you've got. You've got cancer studies, your research skills and the project. And wow, okay, so you literally have a huge selection of optional modules that you can pick at Newcastle. So anything from aging and health to drug discovery to genetics of common diseases, regenerative medicine, toxicology and all of the rest. So to sort of summarise what we have discussed so far, once you've got a handful of masters to look at, make sure you look at the course structure and the course details, then make sure to have a look at the way that the course is taught and what the assessments are going to be like, then have a look at some of the modules, so some of the core modules that you will have to participate in, as well as some of the optional modules that you can pick. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is another way in which you can choose which masters to study and that's basically instead of choosing the course first, you choose the institute first. Let me explain what I mean. So let's say for a number of different reasons you are absolutely sure that you want to go and study at Newcastle. It could be because you like the city, it could be because your family's there, it could be because you're an alumni and you finished your undergraduate and want to continue. But for whatever reason, let's say that you are absolutely sure that you want to stay in Newcastle. How do you go about choosing a master's then? Again, I'm going to pull up a page, but assuming that you still want to stay within the field of biomedical science, but you're not sure which specific topic to choose, what you can do is try and find a list of all of the relevant master's courses that Newcastle has to offer and then try and narrow your searches that way. So going on the website where it was showing us information about the cancer MRES that I was just sharing with you a second ago, if you scroll down, hang on, hang on a minute, I don't think my screen is recording, bear with me. Okay, so if we go on the website that we were on a moment ago, which is essentially the cancer MRES page on the Newcastle website, if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that it says other MRES courses and as you can see you've got a huge list of all of the different MRES courses that are closely linked to the cancer MRES one that we were looking at. So again you've got all sorts from animal behaviour to diabetes to epidemiology to molecular biology and if you are already set on choosing Newcastle then this is another way of narrowing down your searches. Essentially find all of the relevant courses go through them and see if there's one that jumps out at you or that's one that you seem to have a particular interest in. Now, the next thing that I want to address when it comes to choosing which masters to study is some of the forward thinking elements which a lot of you quite rightly want to have in mind. And what I mean by this is that I sometimes get questions from you guys asking me which masters do I need to study in order to get a PhD in this field or which masters do I need to study in order to go into this field of research or which masters do I need to study in order to get a job or that's going to give me the best chances of getting a job. And while I can completely empathise with why you might be thinking about this, I really want to stress that there isn't necessarily a best masters for you to get any of these particular things that you are hoping to get, be it a job or a PhD or an area of research. The reason why I say this is because very often you'll find that if you're applying for jobs or even certain PhDs, they won't necessarily say that we want a masters in cancer research or we want a masters in X field. They will often say we want a master's in life sciences or biological sciences or something of that kind. The important thing that they want is experience. So let's say that you studied a master's in biomedical science and the PhD that you're applying for is microscopy. You may not have covered a lot of microscopy in your master's research, but you may have work experience, either shadowing or doing just a placement or something in a lab to do with microscopy. In that case, you, with a biomedical science master's, are not going to be disadvantaged compared to somebody who, let's say, has a master's in microscopy, assuming that you both have the same experience and meet the same academic criteria. So for that reason, I would just urge you guys not to stress too much about having the exact master's 
masters that you want to kind of take further on to a PhD. The way that I like to describe this to people is let's say that you're learning to cook. Assuming that you learn all of the basics of cooking cooking, like how to cut vegetables or how to cook certain things like pasta or rice or the basics, then the type of dish that you're going to make, you can pick up on the way as long as you know how to do the basics. So if you know how to cook rice to perfection, then it doesn't matter if you're going to be cooking an Indian dish or a Thai dish or a Spanish dish, because you've got the basics covered. Does that analogy work? I hope that analogy works. It works in my head. And that brings me to my last and final point. And that is all about transferable skills. Now this is kind of going off the last point that I made about the fact that as long as you get the basic skills covered, then you can kind of take those skills to wherever you go on to go next. You guys have to remember that in most of these masters, they are ultimately quite similar. So in all of them, you will get an opportunity to write a thesis. You will get an opportunity to carry out a research project of some kind. You will get an opportunity to learn more about the field, you know, to attend lectures or even tutorials or seminars and although the details within these may differ you will generally get a handful of all of these trans all of these transferable skills that you can take with you wherever you go and then the final thing and I know I said I already picked a final thing but this is the final final thing is that it is also good for you guys to think about the location and the Institute itself so I would highly encourage you guys to go on open days if you aren't sure because sometimes if the only difference between you picking one place and the other is literally just the vibe or the feel you get when walking around and exploring the area, then I would encourage you guys to do that because that could make the difference of picking one over the other. But then again, your decision could be made on more simpler things. I can certainly say that in my experience, there were two reasons why I chose to study my masters at King's. The first one being that I just wanted to study in London. And the second one was that my master's course had two six months projects. But yes, essentially those are my two priorities, location and the course structure. So I guess to conclude this video, I would say think about your priorities. Are your priorities the assessments? Is it the course structure? Is it the location? Is it the institute? Is it the course type? Is it the course duration? Think about all of these and hopefully that will help you to narrow down your options somewhat. Now I sincerely hope that this video has been useful to you and if you enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel I will leave my art shop below. Otherwise if you have any further questions and you would like to leave some thoughts and some comments then please do so below. Otherwise I want to wish you a good day, a good week and I will see you in the next one.